Good morning and Happy New Year to you. Of course, when I say New Year, I'm referring to the calendar month because at the end of the day, New Year, New You, that can start any day. Why not today? Let's discuss. Although it's the calendar new year, your personal new year can start today, being whenever you found this video. We can make a new start at any moment in our lives. You just have to do it. So it's a new year. Time to reflect on the past and set new goals for the future. People often focus on disappointments of the past. For example, the failings. When I think of failings, I think about our under attainment this year or our lack of achievements. We also consider the falls, the wrongdoings, the wrongdoings of what we call in the flesh, which means these are the things we knew to be wrong, but for some reason, whether emotions or hormones, we actually give in to those uh, feelings and they are our weaknesses. They're all part of our fall. And then, of course, the other thing we reflect on is disappointments. And I suppose one of the worst disappointments is that of trust. Usually we think about those who failed us, not so much about people we may have failed, but we often feel we're being let down. And then of course the other one, the most popular one, is probably health, which often relates to depression or diets that we broke. Uh, and then of course we also have disease, which obviously we do have some say on the matter, but often it's imposed on us that we, we have no control over these things and we simply grin and bear it. And then, of course, the final one would be that of loss. We reflect on the loss, whether it's a loss of a marriage and a relationship or it's the loss of a loved one through death. But where we are today, we're talking about the new you, the new beginning. Now, the new you, most people unknowingly aim low when moving towards the future. Uh, as the saying says, aim for the stars and you'll reach the moon. You know, we have to think about that for a moment. Sometimes we just don't aim far enough. And even if we don't get there, perhaps we should just stretch ourselves a bit further. Now, as a life coach, my experiences have taught me that people aim for what they believe. And the problem is they can attain um, or are currently capable of. So what I'm saying is that instead of actually aiming for more that they can do they simply aim that's what's within their own limits and their own boundaries and i always push to them to aim bigger that's what motivates you to grow the need to learn new skills and develop stamina and mature as a person and develop inner confidence the you of tomorrow should be greater than the you of today for example you want to work for yourself well instead why not aim bigger and consider being a business owner, creating jobs and opportunities for others. Now, I'm going to give you a life coaching task here to help you get on with your new year. This exercise I'm going to give you is a tool I used to use with my clients to help them develop a vision. If you are a little lost at the moment and unsure where life is taking you and can't seem to find the motivation towards something new, I hope you will give this exercise a go. And at the very end, I will reveal an even greater secret to success. So grab a pad and a pen and let's begin. Now we're going to use the power of imagination to create a vision and realise that vision in our mind initially. So the first thing is we're going to think about location. I want you to think about a geographical location and an environment where this is all going to take place. It could be somewhere nice and cold and arctic, or it could be a tropical sunny place, or perhaps somewhere out of your memories where you've always longed to be. So that's thinking of our area location. But then I want to think about the environment inside as well. I want you to envisage the decoration inside and how it's laid out, and also the light exposure. Has it got a lot of access to daylight? Does it have windows? These things are important. Now the next task I want you to think about is the kind of people you're working with. 
I want you to imagine giving a presentation to a group of people and what it is you're talking about. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about the kind of people in that audience, the kind of people that you're working with. Are they supportive? Do they instruct you? Do they bring skills that you don't possess? Think about it though. Then I want you to see yourself on a rostrum, confidently discussing your ideas with the audience, but note that you are wearing. What are you wearing? What is that you're wearing? Is it what you would typically wear today? Or is it something you can't even see yourself wearing? More importantly, when you observe yourself, how does it appear that you feel? Discussing something that you love and are passionate about, do you see something different in you? Now I want you to consider relationships in your life. Consider relationships of friends and family, possibly children and a special loved one. They may already be in your life or this is going to be someone else in this vision of yours. I want you to think about it. I want you to think about it from the point of view you can almost experience it. What it would feel like to be with them people. The activities you're doing with them people. How you greet them. Do you simply walk in a house, sort of open house scenario? Or do when you walk in they greet you and they're happy to see you and vice versa? Now the next thing I want you to do is envisage the activities and hobbies and interests that you will be engaging with at this time. There may be things you've never even considered or even entertained, but I want you to see that person, what they do in their spare time. Finally, imagine how people treat and respond to you in that vision of a life. And it's not just the people that are close to you. Imagine walking in a shop and how you interact with people then. Right now you might be the shrinking wallflower and you, know, you don't speak to anyone you don't already get introduced to. But is that who you are in this vision? Or perhaps you're quite brash and bold and loud and you find people often recoil from you. But in that vision, is that what's happening there? When you've done all that, I want you to take a good few moments to simply soak it all in and imagine it in your life. Not only see, but feel how it is to live that life. Now at this point, you may choose to end this video, as the task I just gave you is a powerful exercise and will certainly open you up to possibilities. Or, I can reveal to you the key to opening a true earthly potential your potential and to finding joy and success in your life. What have you got to lose? Think about it. So you're still with us. Excellent. Now I would like you to take a highlighter pen and across your page that you've just written I want you to write two Small. Yes, too small. That vision you just had is too small. Your vision is based on your expectations of what you are capable of. It's all self-limiting and just too small. See, only God knows your true potential. And God has so much more for you than you can imagine. And he sees you as even greater than you can ever see yourself. As the saying goes, you don't know what you don't know. Seriously, think about that. So now let's have a little look at a story about a fisherman and just exactly what was his potential. He stood by the lake and saw two boats standing by the lake but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing, 
Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signalled to their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were there with him were astonished at the catch of fish, which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. The point to note is that Simon, as a fisherman, he could only have dreamed of such a catch. Catching fish as they did on a daily basis would have been what provided them with food, and to have a good catch would probably be 20-30 fish. To fill your boat to the point it was breaking is almost like a businessman hitting the million pound figure or the trillion pound figure for the success of his business. So basically Jesus literally gave him his lifetime goal and ambition as a fisherman. At which point when Simon had achieved it, that was it. When we look at success in our life, often we're not aiming big enough. And the point is even if we do, it might not be enough. So like with Simon, as soon as God, through Jesus, fulfilled his dream, God's dream for Simon was even greater. Jesus said to him, I will make you a fisher of men, something that Simon never could have perceived and certainly probably never even understood at that point. But the bottom line is that God's vision is still greater than whatever we can imagine. So, just to be clear, it's not a race to success. Peter spent his days and nights with Jesus, talking directly and being taught by him, in discipleship, but struggled to grasp the lessons based on his own efforts. This is due to his existing worldly beliefs, clashing with the new revelations, and also in his battle with the flesh. Now the flesh, for those who don't understand, the flesh simply is meaning that of the physical body, which is allowing his feelings and emotions to rise up against the new knowledge in what we might call today the subconscious. Eventually, he overcame them with faith and discipline to go on and be one of the greatest of the apostles. In contrast, Saul, a religious legalistic Jew who despised and hunted down Christians had a supernatural experience with Jesus on the road to Damascus. Saul rapidly transformed as a person to become Paul. Paul, being led by the Holy Spirit with faith, both being the two greatest apostles. Now let's just have a look at these differences. Both changed and grew in different ways. Both took a unique route leading to the eventual office of an apostle. Both mighty men of faith and both called from different backgrounds or origins. They both grew beyond their own personal beliefs and both received the same reward and same success, but in their own times which was on God's timetable and not theirs. It isn't a race to success. Now this principle was revealed by Jesus in Matthew 20, 1 to 16. Let's take a look. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his vineyard. Now when he had agreed with the labourers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, You also, go into the vineyard and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one hires this. He said to them, You also, go into the vineyard, and whatever is right you will receive. So when evening had come, 
the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the labourers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. And when those came, who were hired about the eleventh hour, they each received a denarius. But when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise received each a denarius. And when they had received it, they complained against the landowner, saying, These last men have worked only one hour, and you made them equal to us, who have borne and burdened, and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go your way. I wish to give this last man the same as to you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be first, and the first last. For many are called, but few chosen. So, God's promise or reward is a given. When we walk with him, work to his instruction, in his service, and aim to do a good job, he rewards us equally. It is not a matter who starts first or finishes last, because it is not a race. Just give your best, make the effort, and be pleased to serve, for which expect to receive a good reward. And I mean that. Why would you not be rewarded? If you don't expect to receive an award, then that's often why people give up, because they don't even see where success is coming from. But success really is rooted in faith. None of which is based on actual works, but the willingness to love, to faithfully serve God with gratitude. Now I hope this video blesses you this day, and may God's grace be with you. If you were blessed by this video, why not give it a like? Also subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of future videos.